Hello, today we are going to learn about the push and pull principle and it is one of the most important understandings about the judo playing that I have. So I have to share it in this way in case a meteor falls on me and you know it gets totally destroyed and it takes me a couple of days to crawl out that you have a reference right here and now here on this channel you can open the video and uh, check what you're doing. And the push and pull is not a technique, it is an understanding of how energies in the body work and it underlies the technique actually it underlies everything and all playing can be seen through the perspective of push and pull so let's see on example what a push is and what a pull is so if you have a hardcore pusher he or she will sound a little bit like this <laughs> If you have a hardcore puller, she or he will sound like. If you have the same movement to observe both principles, let's take Takawaka. So it is a four phase tongue movement where tongue follows four positions and it perpetuates itself through some kind of elasticity and you have a pusher playing the takawaka it will sound a little bit like this and if you have a puller play the same technique it will sound like however if you have the push puller playing the takawaka, it will have uh, qualities of both. So let's see what is the theory behind the push and the pull the push is a body dominant movement it has the stress at the beginning of the sound the pushers use a lot of air and lose a lot of air uh, their sound is voluminous but not well defined um, the feeling of push is a bit like feeling of sneezing um, on the contrary the pullers have the stress at the end of the sound they use much less air and lose much as less air their sound is precise um, but not so voluminous and um, it is a bit more like yawning <sighs> that movement it is mouth focused whereas the push is body focused so the push comes let's say from the stomach not be more precise than this and the pull comes from the mouth So we always have to ask ourselves why is it so important because otherwise why why bother learning it so the push and pull can help you the push and pull principle can help you understand what is going on in, with your body and how you can balance yourself out when you have too much or too little air for example if you have too much air in the body you can um, try to uh, pull less or push more if you have too little air in your body you can try to push less or to pull more because pull is that what stops the push and somehow they work together and this is the next important step of it is um, establishing the elasticity you see elasticity is very closely related to pressure in the body and when you push if it doesn't come to any uh, obstacle any friction it's that energy of the push will not be transformed into sound and uh, in this way the push and pull create some kind of uh, elastic medium in which you can operate all those movements so when you push in takawaka you push on the ta and you pull on the wa and that um, together somehow keeps the energy inside your body 
Because if you're just pushing, taka waka, taka waka, you're leaning forward and you're falling forward. If you're just pulling, taka waka, taka waka, you're leaning backwards. That is just um, uh, an idea, just an image to for you to understand what happens if you're falling too much out of balance. For example, so you're not getting the sound and you're losing a lot of air. The elasticity allows you to play faster. It allows you uh, to be more agile with the movements. So let's turn theory into practice. The basic pull exercise would be that you do the movement of the jaw going down and you uh, let a uh, relatively lot of air uh, in that movement. And in the second part of the movement, the movement is in two parts, you pull the jaw up you press the lips together and you inhale. So I'm not specifying any speed at which you need to play or any sound that you need to get just to get this feeling of chewing the air. That is the pull. And we could call this the mother of all pulling exercises. The basic push exercise is to um, pre-compress your body and release a, a short and um, um, well-defined burst of air. Everything that is happening in the mouth now is less important. So it is a short contraction and then release. That could be uh, the father of all push exercises. I sometimes call this the male and female principle because the male is this, I'm going to hunt and I'm going right now through the door or through the window or through the wall and I don't care if I come back, I will just kill this mammoth and that's it, you know. And the female principle keeps the energy and, and it's, she says, okay, I have to take care of this 57 children and uh, I have to um, keep some energy for later. And in this way, the energy of the push comes first, the energy of the pull comes later. Now the push and pull isn't something that is um, always easy to define. It's, some, it's sometimes something that goes deep into uh, a certain movement that you do and a certain could be this whole rhythm or the phrase that you're playing. So how to balance your push and pull can be sometimes elusive, but you have to feel it in the body, what it means to push and what it means to pull. And if you're a pusher, then you should practice your pull more. So this means if you're using a lot of your body when you play, this means that you have to make the mouth movements aware. And if you are using a lot of uh, mouth when you play, probably means that you sometimes have to have some dynamic change inside the body. So besides these two very basic push and pull exercises, and I will repeat them, the basic push exercise, and not this. So it needs to be like a bullet. It needs to explode a little bit. Okay, firm. And the basic pull exercise, You can practice your takawaka, for example, to have um, more of a push quality or more of a pull quality. So you keep the movement the same, but you balance the energy more in the uh, body sense or more in the mouth sense. You can have a bit more uh, of a rhythm. So for example, like the beginning of the stinky room, this dum di takawaka, dum di takawaka. You can take care that the push is done in a healthy way so that it's not slow, that the rise time is like almost immediate. It doesn't go wow, but it goes bam, okay? And the takawaka has more also the punch on the ta 
and the uh, definition of the Y and the Ka. <laughs> In the original stink room, the push was more done on the, this dumdi, and the takawaka was done more uh, in the pull style. But you can change as you want. Mm, another rhythm that you can take would be in one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two. You can play two times push, one time pull. Dum dum tave. Okay. Then you play two times, uh, one time push, two times pull. Dum tave tave and then one times push, one time pull, okay? In this way, you have exactly the same amount of push and pull and you can feel when you're using only your body and when you're using only your mouth. Of course, you're always using your body and your mouth. But the question is, what is um, the dominant uh, energy? Is it the push or the pull, the yin and the yang, the male or the female? It doesn't have any relation to your gender. It just has connection to something which is more natural to you. Um, when I was when I started to play, I was predominantly a puller. So somehow I had to teach myself the push. Now I'm not e either push or pull, pull dominant, I play both. And uh, if you realize that you have a weakness by playing too much push or too much pull and not being able to do the other thing, then you should balance yourself out by focusing on, on that which is weak. Uh, the goal is to find the balance and the balance is to have a similar amount of similar abilities with push and pull thank you if you enjoy the video or if you didn't enjoy actually you can subscribe because it's just one click of the button so so simple and um, if you have any questions you can write them in the comments and uh, I hope you understand why you need to work on your weaknesses spiral out keep going <laughs>